Our final topic for this little circuit we've made is power flow. Circuits really just have electrical energy flowing through them. If we draw this circuit again, one way you could draw what's actually happening is the power is flowing from the battery out through the resistor. So let's think a little bit about what each element is doing. The battery does work on the carriers. It's uh, doing a certain amount of work per unit time by bringing the carriers from zero potential to a high, higher potential. And then the current creates heat in the resistor. That's the other place there's a power flow in the circuit. Gives the energy to the current and it loses it in the resistor and all those little collisions, all those little Druda action collisions happen and creates more heat like you've learned about. So let's look at it quantitatively for a minute. Let's think about the battery. The power is sort of the change in energy per unit time. We'll call it du dt. And what it's doing is taking char carriers of charge Q and giving them a potential difference delta V. It's raising their potential. So that would be D times their charge Q delta V dt. And this is a derivative of a product of two things. So you apply the product rule. That's going to be delta V times dQ dt plus um, Q times d delta V dt. So you can look at those and say, what is this? Well, this is delta V and dQ dt is the current. So that's delta V times I, if you think about what's happening to individual ones. And then here, d delta V dt, well, delta V is a constant. That's the battery applied, or that's the, the potential difference applied by the battery. So this is zero. So we see that the work, the, the, or the power, by the battery, P is I delta V. It's the current times the amount of work or the potential difference you carry it through. And it makes sense. If the work it does on a single carrier is its charge times delta V, then the rate of work, this is just the rate of charge, that would make sense. This P equals I delta V applies actually to any circuit element. You can also think about the resistor, the current flowing through it times the delta V that you lose which in this case is equal to what you gain in the battery because there's nothing else in the circuit. That's how much energy, or that's the power that you lose that goes out to heat. Okay? Sometimes you see it written different ways. You might have a circuit where you just know the current and you just know the resistance. You want to know the power. Well, you could use V equals IR here, and that would be I times I times R. So P is also often written I squared times R. Or you can get it in terms of V and R. If you just know the potential and the resistance, you'll get that it's delta V squared over R. Between V, I, and R, there's several ways you can write the expression for, for power. So let's look at power in a circuit. Here, remember, we have our little power supply, and the wires go to this little resistor. So if you want to see the power, you turn it on. That's pretty boring, right? So you don't really see anything because, well, just trust me, there's power being dissipated in the little resistor. But now, let's do something more exciting, OK? So here is another little resistor. Uh, this is something they used to use a long time ago as a source of heat. It's a nichrome wire, a very long nichrome wire. Nichrome has a high resistance that you actually plug into the wall. So nice fat copper wires here don't have much resistance in them. But then it goes to nichrome, huge resistance. So all your power is dissipated in this thing. And if you plug it in, it generates so much heat. You have so many little Druda collisions in there, exciting the lattice. It gets so hot, it actually glows orange, and it feels really warm. And you can use it to heat your room. You don't usually have it sitting out in the open like this. Usually you have it in sort of a little lens shape thing that kind of radiates the heat out into the room. But that's what this is. So now you can see it starting to turn orange. This is one of my favorite demos because uh, it can both shock me and burn me at the same time. It's extra dangerous because this is line potential right out here in the open. I have it hooked up with an ammeter in series. So this is basically just a little instrument that's measuring the current. OK, 
Okay? And you can see it has a current, I think, of around 5.5, around 5.5 amps, something like that. And now you can literally see the power being dissipated. So what we're going to do now is change things a little bit. We talked about how resistance depends on temperature, or resistivity depends on temperature. So if I could change the resistivity of this wire, we can see what would happen. What I'm going to do is this. So if I blow on it, you can see it cools off. It's not glowing anymore. I'm changing the resistivity. I'm changing the resistance of the wire. And we can see what happened to the current. So the current, I think, was about 5.49 or something, 5.47. So I blow on it, spit on it a little bit. That cools it off, and the current goes up. So we can say, which law makes sense? What's happening? Oh, it's here. It's V equals IR. That's what explains it. Delta V equals IR. We're applying a constant delta V. The wall is giving us 115 volts. It's actually AC, but don't worry about it. 115 volts here. I blew on it, and um, I made the resistance go down. Therefore, the current had to go up. If we thought in terms of power, we would want to go here. The delta V is constant. I blew on it. The resistance went down. Actually, it dissipates more power when I blow on it. I cool it off. And it actually ends up not as hot. It's not orange, but it's actually more power gets dissipated when I'm cooling it than when I let it just sit here and get to equilibrium. So anyway, this is just an element like this, which I don't recommend you play with, is a way that you can really see and think about power dissipated in a circuit.